Hello everyone, it's the Proof Essayist here. I want to do something a little bit more on the literary side of things, and thus decided to do a read aloud of some of my favorite works of literature and potentially philosophy in the, in the future. If I do philosophy, there's potentially going to be analysis for it. But let's start off nice and simple. I'm going to go over my favorite Irish playwrights, absurdist play, Today, Waiting for Godot, a tragic comedy in two acts by Samuel Beckett, which is published in September 1952. Now, this play is all about absurdism, existentialism. I have many fond memories of this play because I read it around high school, optionally, although it's quite, quite a uh, tough read in a sense for... Uh, I wouldn't consider myself a non-native English speaker, but I am Southeast Asian, so I, I did not grow up in the European things, and I typically most people would find this story of stuff intimidating, but for me, it was a treat and pleasure. All the stories about patience, anticipation, expectation, anxiety, and overall the beating of life, which is raised in this, is quite excellent. I would like to distinguish that this is an absurdist work, less so than an existentialist work, and I might go over my take on how I distinguish between those two concepts, but let's just get to the meat of it and read it right away. So without, without any further ado, let's start. Act 1. A country road. A tree. Evening. Estragon, sitting on a low mound, is trying to take off his boot. He pulls at it with both hands, panting. He gives up, exhausted, rests, tries again. As before. Enter Vladimir. Giving up again, says, Vlad says Estragon. Nothing to be done, Vladimir. Advancing with short, stiff strides, legs wide apart. I'm beginning to come around to that opinion. All my life, I've tried to put it from me, saying, Vladimir, be reasonable. You haven't yet tried everything. And I resume the struggle. He broods, musing on the struggle. Turning to Estragon. So there you are again, Estragon. Am I? Vladimir, I'm glad to see you back. I thought you were gone forever. Estragon, me too. Vladimir. Together again at last. We'll have to celebrate this. But how? He reflects. Get up till I embrace you. Estragon. Irritably. Not now, not now. Vladimir. Hurt. Coldly. May one inquire where his highness spent the night? Estragon. In a ditch. Vladimir. Admiringly. A ditch? Where? Estragon, without gesture. Over there! Vladimir. And they didn't beat you? Estragon. Beat me? Certainly they beat me. Vladimir. The same lot as usual? Estragon. The same? I don't know. Vladimir. When I think of it, all these years, but for me, where would you be? Decisively. You'd be nothing more than a little heap of bones at the present minute, no doubt about it. Estragon. And what of it? Vladimir. Gloomily. It's too much for one man. Pause. Cheerfully. On the other hand, what's the good of losing heart now? That's what I say. We should have thought of it a million years ago, in the 90s. Estragon. Ah, stop blabbering and help me off with this bloody thing. Vladimir, hand in hand from the top of the Eiffel Tower among the first, we were respectable in those days. Now it's too late. They wouldn't even let us up. Estragon tears at his boot. What are you doing? Estragon, taking off my boot. Did that never happen to you? Vladimir, boots must be taken off every day. I'm tired telling you that. Why don't you listen to me? Estragon, feebly, help me! Vladimir, it hurts? Estragon, angrily, hurts? He wants to know if it hurts. 
No one ever suffers but you. I don't count. I'd like to hear what you say if you had what I have. It hurts? Hurts? He wants to know if it hurts. You might button it all the same. True. Stooping and buttoning his fly. Never neglect the little things of life. What do you expect? You always wait till the last moment. Vladimir muses. The last moment. Hope deferred make of the something sick. Who said that? Why don't you help me? Sometimes I feel it coming all the same. Then I go all queer. He takes off his hat, peers inside it, feels about inside it, shakes it, puts it on again. How shall I say, relieved, and at the same time... He searches for the word. Appalled, with emphasis. Appalled. He takes off his hat again, peers inside it. Funny. Knocks on the crown as though to dislodge a foreign body. Peers into it again, puts it on again. Nothing to be done. Estragon, with a supreme effort, succeeds in pulling off his boot. He peers inside it, feels about inside it, turns it upside down, shakes it. Looks on the ground to see if anything has fallen out. Finds nothing. Feels inside again, staring sightlessly before him. Well? Nothing. Show? There's nothing to show. Try and put it on again. Examining his foot. I'll air it for a bit. There's man all over for you, blaming on his boots the fault of his feet. He takes off his hat again, peers inside it, feels about inside it, knocks on the crown, blows into it, puts it on again. This is getting alarming. Silence. Vladimir, deep in thought. Estragon pulling at his toes. One of the thieves was saved. Pause. It's a reasonable percentage. Go, go. What? Suppose we repented. Repented what? Oh. We wouldn't have to go into the details. Are being born? <laughs> Vladimir breaks into a hearty laugh which he immediately stifles, his hand pressed to his pubis, his face contorted. One daren't even laugh anymore. Dreadful privation. Merely smile. He, su he smiles suddenly from ear to ear. Keeps smiling. Ceases as suddenly. It's not the same thing. Nothing to be done. Go, go. What is it? Did you ever read the Bible? The Bible? I must have taken a look at it. Do you remember the Gospels? I remember the maps of the Holy Land. Colored they were. Very pretty. The Dead Sea was pale blue. The very look of it made me thirsty. That's where we'll go. I used to say, that's where we'll go for our honeymoon. We'll swim. We'll be happy. You should have been a poet. <laughs> I was. Isn't that obvious? Where was I? How's your foot? Swelling visibly. Ah, yes, the two thieves. Do you remember the story? No. Shall I tell it to you? No. It'll pass the time. Two thieves crucified at the same time as our savior. One. Our what? Our savior. Two thieves was supposed to have been saved, and the other. Damned. Saved from what? Hell. I'm going. He does not move. And yet. How is it? This is not boring you, I hope. How is it that of the four evangelists, only one speaks of a thief being saved? The four of them were there or thereabouts, and only one speaks of a thief being saved. Come on, Gogo, -Go. return the ball, can't you once in a while? I find this really most extraordinarily interesting. One out of four. Of the other three, two don't mention any thieves at all, and the third says that both of them abused him. 
Who? What? What's all this about? Abused who? The savior. Why? Because he wouldn't save them. From hell? Imbecile, from death! I thought you said hell. From death, from death. Well, what of it? Then the two of them must have been damned. And why not? But one of the four says that one of the two was saved. Well, they don't agree, and that's all there is to it. But all four were there, and only one speaks of a thief being saved. Why believe him rather than the others? Who believes him? Everybody. It's the only version they know. People are bloody ignorant apes. He rises painfully, goes limping to extreme left, halts, gazes in the distance off with his hands screening his eyes, turns, goes to extreme right, gazes into distance. Vladimir watches him, then goes and picks up the boot, peers into it, drops it hastily. Pa! He spits. Estragon moves to center, halts with his back to auditorium. Charming spot. He turns, advances to front, halts, facing auditorium. Inspiring prospects, he turns to Vladimir. Let's go! We can't. Why not? We're waiting for Godot. Ah, you're sure it was here? What? That we were to wait? He sat by the tree. They look at the tree. Do you see any others? What is it? I don't know. A willow. Where are the leaves? It must be dead. No more weeping. Or perhaps it's not the season. Looks to me more like a bush. A shrub. A bush. Eh, what are you insinuating? That we've come to the wrong place? He should be here. He didn't say for sure he'd come. And if he doesn't come, we'll come back tomorrow. And then the day after tomorrow? Possibly. And so on. The point is... Until he comes. You're merciless. We came here yesterday. Ah no, there you're mistaken. What did we do yesterday? Yeah, what did we do yesterday? Yes. Why? Nothing is certain when you're about. In my opinion, we were here. You recognize the place. I didn't say that. Well, that makes no difference. All the same, that tree turned towards auditorium. That bog. You're sure it was this evening. What? That we were to wait. He said Saturday. I think. You think? I must have made a note of it. He fumbles in his pockets, bursting with miscellaneous rubbish. Very insidious. But what's Saturday? And is it Saturday? Is it not rather Sunday? Or Monday? Or Friday? Looking wildly about him as though the date was inscribed in the landscape. It's not possible. Or Thursday? Well, we do. If he came yesterday and we weren't here, you may be sure he won't come again today. But you say we were here yesterday. I may be mistaken. Let's stop talking for a minute. Do you mind? And here I'm going to finish reading this excerpt here. Now as you notice, the style of dialogue is very rambly, which can be understandably a turn off in some sense. But think of it. If you had an appointment to meet with someone who is to tell you something very important, and in the context of this play, post-World War II, once the economy has gone to extreme waste, you kind of go a bit crazy talking to your counterpart about rambling, off-topic, digressive things. If they were the only person left in the world you can interact with. And indeed, in this play, aside from Estragon and Vladimir, only two other characters, Potso and Lucky, make an appearance. Who I might go and discuss I might go and discuss about later. But overall, this is great. I can see the ennui or the boredom, the anxiety 
and the depression that comes with this state of loneliness and alienation that Vladimir and Estragon are facing. It's encapsulated quite well. And the symbol of the willow tree that they mention, which is in the middle of nowhere where they're standing in the ditch. <laughs> what I love about that as an Ace Attorney fan is that that is actually a reference to both the character Godot or Diego Armando from Trials and Tribulations, Ace Attorney. Because in Japanese, the character's Japanese name is Ka Kiryu Kami no Ryogu. I unfortunately might be getting that wrong, but what it translates to, or what the kanji makes up, is the kanji of a willow tree. And indeed, the dynamic between Estragon and Vladimir with this unknown identity, this unknown entity of Gado, is kind of paralleled by the dynamic between Mia Fei and Godo, albeit Shu Takumi, the creator of Ace Attorney, takes romantic twist on it. But I won't belabor you with the analysis. Again, the whole point of this is just to read aloud for the most point. So, this is the end. I'm the Proof Essayist. If you like this video, please, please feel free to comment and subscribe. And if you have any suggestions, if you have any suggestions, please leave them down in the comments. Until then, please have a pleasant day.